My brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will start a discussion of segment 3 Death, Grave, and Barzakh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Rabbi shurahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ahlu luqdatan min lisani yafkahu kawli. I chose this topic, life, death and existence, specifically to let all believers know that death is not a dreadful event, but the passing of this segment of our lives to one which is full of peacefulness, happiness and eternal existence in a state of youthfulness. And so it is an event to wait for with pleasant anticipation. I deliberately choose to minimize the punishment and suffering of those who refuse to follow the instructions of Allah and instead emphasize the rewards, beauty and eternal tranquility reserved for those obeying the instructions. I pray all of us will be within the last group. Most of the information is taken from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance to us with some references from Hadith. In this life, the soul and the body are united together except during sleep when the soul may leave the body and return at the time we awake or Allah may keep the soul during sleep. We learn from the Quran it is Allah that takes the souls at death, and those who do not die, He takes during their sleep. Those on whom He has passed the decree of death, He keeps back from returning to life, but the rest He sends to their body for a term appointed. Verily, in these are signs for those who reflect. This verse makes it clear that life and death are in the hands of Allah alone. No one can guarantee that he will wake up alive in the morning when he goes to sleep at night. No one knows what disaster could befall him within a moment and whether the next moment he would be alive or dead. At any time, while asleep or awake, in the house or outside of it, some unforeseen calamity can suddenly cause death. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying that when we understand that we are so helpless, we will ensure that we are not heedless of Him. In the same way that the person does not cease to exist in sleep, similarly, he does not cease to exist in death. And in the same way that the person comes back to life when waking from sleep, likewise he will be revived at the great awakening on the day of resurrection. Islam views death as a stage in human existence, which is segment three that we are discussing now. If we live our lives in accordance with the Quranic principles, we will not be fearful of dying, but instead make preparations for the event and become excited to meet our Creator. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reported, our Prophet sallallahu said, Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. Whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet with him. I said, O Prophet of Allah, all of us hate death and are sad about it. The Prophet said, It is not like this. Rather, when a believer receives good news of the mercy of Allah, and of the pleasures he will receive in paradise. He loves to meet Allah, and Allah loves to meet him. When a disbeliever is given news of punishment at the hands of Allah, and the difficulties he will face, he hates to meet Allah, and Allah hates to meet him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, everyone shall taste death, and only on the day of resurrection shall you be paid for your wages in full. And whoever is removed away from the fire and admitted to paradise 
this person is indeed successful. The life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception. Mata'awul ghurur. You can find this in 3, 185. And I pray all of us are included in this successful group. And that Allah makes our death easy and peaceful. Death is divinely willed. And when it arrives, it should be readily accepted. It is the gateway from this short and mortal existence to a life of permanence after we die. It is customary for Muslims to be buried and not cremated. It is a religious requirement that the body is ritually washed and shrouded before burial, which should be done as soon as possible after death. The dying person is encouraged to recite and declare his or her faith. When a Muslim dies, his or her face should be turned towards the Qibla. The arms and legs should be straightened and the mouth and eyes closed and the body covered with the sheet. A baby dying at or before birth must be given a name. No one knows where, how, and when he or she will die. Allah says, Verily, the knowledge of the hour is with Allah alone. It is He who sends down rain, and He who knows what is in the wombs. No one knows what He will earn tomorrow, and no soul knows in which land He will die. Verily, with Allah is the full knowledge, and He is aware of all things. When it is time for someone to die, the angel of death comes to take the soul out of the body and put it in a place called Barzakh. Allah tells us, Say, the angel of death who is put in charge of you will take your souls. Then you shall be brought back to your Lord. Wherever you are, death will find you out, even if you are in towers built up strong and high. For the people who disobeyed Allah and His commands during their lifetime, death is a very difficult process. We learn from the Quran that the angels beat them on their faces and backs as they snatch away their souls. Sometimes their souls cling so tightly to their bodies that it becomes necessary for more than one angel to work together to force these souls out of their bodies. I pray that none of us will be in this group. As for those who live the righteous life, the soul is excited to meet its Lord and leaves the body with ease, like a drop of water falling on a leaf. A light like the sun's ray and a sweet fragrance come out of the soul. We learn that death is exactly like sleeping, complete with dreams. The period between death and resurrection passes like one night of sleep or less. At the moment of death, everyone knows his or her destiny, heaven or hell. Allah tells us that the angels will say at the time of death, Inna alladheena kalu rabbun allahu thumma stakamu. Surely, those who said, Our Lord is Allah, and then remain on a right course, the angels would descend upon them, saying, Do not fear and do not grieve, but receive good news of paradise, which you were promised. And then again, Allah informs us, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radwiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati O peaceful and satisfied soul, return to your Lord well pleased with yourself and well pleasing to Him. Enter then among my faithful servants Enter now into my paradise. The believer will be told this three times. 
one, at the time of death, when the angels approach. Two, on the day of resurrection, when he will rise from the dead and move towards the plain of assembly. And three, finally, when he will be presented in the divine court. At every stage, he will be assured that he is moving towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore he should have no worry or fear. I pray we are all included with all of the believers and that we will have no worry or fear when our time comes. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawwabu rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar.